Hi, I'm Marjorie, and I'm going to show you how to use the snowflake shape from the Aki Quilt Go Holiday Medley die to make a machine embroidered quilt block. This example is for a quilt block that's part of a bed runner. The bed runner is made of vertical rows, and the rows are assembled first, and then the embroidery is stitched onto the completed quilt block. These are the supplies that you will need. The first thing you'll need is a background fabric. This bed runner is put together in vertical rows and the applique is going to go on this center vertical row. And you can see there is a six inch plain block there and that is the background fabric. The die that I'm using is the Holiday Medley for the AccuQuilt Go and I'll be using the snowflake shape so I have cut a plain piece of fabric for my applique that is a six inch square and I will add a repositionable fusible to the back of this fabric. This is Steam Light Steam Seam 2 for my embroidery hoop, I'm going to use a soft, lightweight tearaway stabilizer, and the Sulky Tear Easy is a good example of that. And because the applique is going onto a quilt block and the fabric, the background fabric, will be floated on top of the hoop. I'm going to use a temporary spray adhesive and I like the Sulky KK2000 uh, as a temporary spray adhesive. Other things I'll need are thumbtacks and uh, marking pens and I will use those for positioning the background fabric onto the stabilizer that is in the embroidery hoop. I will use these tweezers that I got at Lowe's to help position the snowflake onto the placement lines once I start doing the machine embroidery. I'm going to prepare my applique fabric for cutting and I'm pressing it to make it nice and smooth. I take the light Steam a seam too, and I peel off one side of the paper. Uh, sometimes one side peels off and sometimes the other, but I don't think it really matters which side peels off. Let me find my trash can there. Okay, and then I am just going to place that onto the wrong side of the fabric. And smooth it out nicely on both sides with your fingers so that the nice thing about this repositionable uh, fusible is that you get second chances so if you needed to if you had a wrinkle on one side and needed to reposition you can certainly peel it off and do that now that almost feels like a wrinkle right there so I'm, I really am going to peel it back and just make sure that it's going to go on nice and smooth. And then I'm just going to give it a press. And now I have fabric on one side and paper on the other side fused together and I'm ready to cut my applique. Here is my holiday medley die and I'm going to place my fabric exactly over the snowflake and I'm going to have the paper side down and the fabric side up. You can see the paper underneath. I will put my mat over the top and simply roll it through the AccuQuilt Go Cutter. Now the nice thing about the Holiday Medley die is that it works with all of the cutters. It works with the Baby Go, the AccuQuilt Go, and the Go Big. I pull the waste fabric off 
And look at this beautiful snowflake. We're going to hoop our stabilizer into our machine embroidery hoop. So this is that nice soft flexible stabilizer and I'm just going to secure it nice and snug into the hoop as you can see. I want to mark the center of the hoop so I'm going to use this flexible ruler. You could use a sheet of paper, you could use anything because there are notches on my embroidery hoop and all embroidery hoops have markings that uh, mark the horizontal and the vertical center. So I'm using a pencil because I know that the snowflake is going to completely cover that and I don't have to worry about it ever showing through. So once that is marked, I am going to spray it with my Sulky Spray Adhesive. Now, I use um, a piece of stabilizer that has been cut out to protect my embroidery hoop. And I'm actually, I usually do this inside a paper box with tall sides so that I don't get spray everywhere. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I am simply going to spray. And it doesn't take much spray at all. Now that my embroidery hoop is prepared and ready for the fabric to go on top, I need to prepare the background fabric. And to prepare the background fabric, I am simply going to press it in the center horizontally and vertically. So it's easy to match these seams just like that and give it a press. You can use, certainly you can use a marking pen, uh, but you need to be very careful that you use something that uh, will not be will not be visible and that you can remove. And sometimes even chalk is hard to remove. So once I have my horizontal and vertical lines marked on my background fabric and I have the horizontal and vertical lines marked on my embroidery hoop, I need to uh, fasten this background fabric to the embroidery hoop. And this is where the uh, thumbtacks come in. So I turn the hoop over, I can see those pencil marks through that stabilizer, and I just insert the point of a thumbtack at the very point of that center mark. And then I very carefully place my fabric and find the center mark there that was pressed into place and it's just very easy to bring it down over that thumbtack and then use these notches to secure the fabric vertically and horizontally into place and it sticks very nicely to the temporary spray adhesive I can then remove that thumbtack. Now, just because I'm a careful person, I'm also going to add some pins. So I use these silk pins and just secure these corners. Because this is well outside the area that will be embroidered. but it's very nice to know that 
no matter what happens, your embroidery, your background fabric is not going to bunch up or um, move. So once I do that, I think you can see that this snowflake is going to fit inside and it's not going to touch any of those pins. Now we're ready to take this to the machine and the machine is on and I'm ready to load my design. Now I'm going to place this embroidery hoop onto my machine and I make sure that no part of the fabric is underneath the hook. I'm taking, my, I'm taking the machine into embroidery mode and it will stitch out the placement line. Now I turn the uh, stitch trimmer off on my machine simply because I like the back to be as neat as the front. So um, I will be trimming the threads myself. And I'm going to trim those thread tails. And the machine is actually stitching the placement line. The machine stops and I'm going to trim the thread and I'm going to remove the machine. But I'm going to remove the hook from the machine. I think you can see this placement line. Now it's time to place the snowflake within the placement line so that the machine can do the embroidery. And I have zoomed in. I hope you can see um, how I carefully do this. I am going to use a pen to score the back of the paper. And then when I fold that paper, it just cracks open. And you have a snowflake with lots of arms and legs that actually can get stuck onto each other. Let me zoom out just a little bit. There are a lot of, uh, this is a very flimsy snowflake and the back is very tacky. So I think you should see that. Now let's see if we can get this placed. I like to just sort of place it generally and then I start working on my little octopus and I use these tweezers and I actually make sure that I get the tips of the snowflake secured first and that is the beauty of this repositionable uh, sticky stabilizer because if it's not right I can always go back and lift it up and reposition it again. So I'm going to go all the way around positioning this very carefully We want to make sure sometimes they get it gets turned just a little bit but the nice thing about fabric is that it has some flexibility and so like this it seems like it that's too long but if I pull that in and make it actually fit those stitching lines I can just pat it right down 
and any of these little what seem like bubbles you can just pat down you know when we're sewing seams we ease things in and sometimes with applique we also need to ease it in and just make sure you don't have any little wrinkles and once that's done and you're satisfied with your placement then the only thing you really have to do is take a mini iron oops do you see what I did here I let the edge of my mini iron grab the edge of that applique so I want to go back and make sure that it's nice and straight and then fuse it again and this is why we need to press and not iron that's hard for all of us and so now it's nice and flat and it's secure to the background the next thing we're going to do is take it back to the machine and stitch it. You're going to have a nice motif stitch throughout the whole inside and then a beautiful motif lacy stitch that will stitch around the applique. The hoop is back on the machine and I am going to pull up my bobbin thread and hold it out of the way while my machine does its first few stitches. I will then trim that thread and the machine is ready to complete the stitching. Now it takes a while for the stitching to complete so it's a great time to go back and clean up your scraps, cut your shapes for your next uh, embroidery, uh, but we're going to turn this on and let it go. embroidery is complete and now it's time to take it out of the hoop and remove the stabilizer. Remember it has pins in it so we're going to take all of those pins out. Wow. Oh. It's probably better to take the pins out while it's still in the hoop and you won't get stuck and you won't get blood on your quilt. Now I'm going to set the hoop aside and turn it to the back side and remove the stabilizer. And I like to do this by just removing big sections at a time. And remember we had that temporary spray adhesive on it that is so lightweight that it doesn't even affect your ability to remove the stabilizer. And then I'm going to use this tool, which I got at Lowe's, a nice, nice tweezer, which has a very thin tip. And I'm able to get in between the arms of the snowflake and just lift that stabilizer out. This stabilizer is so soft and every time this quilt is washed it becomes softer so while it supports the stitches nicely it also um, allows you to have a nice soft quilt. Now the next thing that we will do when we're working with machine embroidery 
is to place this on a soft surface and sometimes I'll put a dish towel or something like that down and then I just give it a light press from the back side like that. We turn it over and there's a beautiful snowflake here which is the focus embroidery for one of the squares on point in the bed runner.